1950, a full-scale riot broke out during a service here at St Barnabas in Pimlico. A huge mob had gathered outside. 100 policemen had to be drafted in to control them, and members of the congregation were commissioned as special constables in order to line up here against the screen and protect the choir. What had inflamed the mob was what they saw as Catholic practices taking place. And they weren't alone. Queen Victoria herself said that they should put a stop to these ritualistic practices. The Victorian period saw a boom in church building. But surprisingly for the industrial age, many in the church turned for inspiration to the mystery and symbolism of Britain's medieval past. I'm Richard Taylor. I write books that unravel the meaning of Britain's churches. I'll be reading the religious architecture of the last 150 years to discover how religious turmoil, two world wars, and modern culture have all shaped Britain's churches. And also to find out what value the ancient images of Christianity, reinvented so many times, may still have in the present day. This church, St Barnabas, where the riots took place, was the very first to be built by a radical new movement that would change the look of churches across England. The spark for the revolution that swept through English church buildings was a sermon preached in 1833 by an Oxford theologian called John Keeble. Keeble reminded his congregation that when the people of Israel had turned their backs on the Lord their God, God had punished them, and he predicted a similar fate for England if England did not mend its ways. By the 19th century, the Church of England had become almost an arm of the state. Inside Britain's churches, where once there had been saints, there were now symbols of worldly status. Even the Great Rood had had to make way for the royal coat of arms. Keeble's sermon tapped into a growing belief that the established church had lost something special, its sacred mystery.